Marissa and this is MKissa Creations. Uh, this is a floss tube channel, uh, which is a floss tube is a section of YouTube that is mainly about cross stitch. Um, today I do have a couple other crafts to show you, um, but welcome. Today is Friday, December 6th, and this is floss tube number 35. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this is a wild time of year with so many floss tube videos. Um, and I just really appreciate you coming to spend some time with me. So let's get started. I will try not to make this too long, but I have a lot to show you. I have three new starts, three whips. I have a quilt finish, a quilt top finish. And then I also have my FFO, which is not a, um, it's not a cross stitch project, but it's like adjacent. <laughs> so um, we're going to go with that. I'm a little bit voice weirdy. Um, our entire house has, I think, had the walking pneumonia that has been going around. Um, pretty heavy here in Maine. Um, <clears throat> and so it's a little, we're on, we're all on the mend. Um, everyone's feeling better, but it's been a wild ride. So we got decorated for Christmas. Um, there's like, oh, there's more stuff up there, but you can't see. <laughs> it's too high. Um, maybe I'll insert some pictures of um, our Christmas stuff towards in the beginning or like before the intro. I don't know. Um, and so you'll have either already seen it or you'll see it towards the end. Um, we don't do a ton for um, decorating just because we don't have a lot of space. So like you, I showed you my Halloween decor and it's just like on my like windowsill area. Um, we don't have a lot of like flat surfaces that are not covered with other stuff already. All right. Um, let's get started on the stitching. I wanted to let you know that if you have won any giveaways, they have already been sent out. So they should be in your hands or on your way to you. Um, but we do have one more giveaway. So I'll do that right now. We'll get it out of the way. Um, I've been giving away my Tropical Santa uh, pattern. Mill Hill kit, and then I'm giving, well, it's not a full kit, but it has some of the leftover beads, leftover floss that's already pre-sorted for you because I took care of that. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to do a, a comment picker. So there were four people that wanted this. And this, this was a fast turnaround for me for videos. I'm on a two week uh, mark. Like I said before, I like to make videos in December. Um, we've got some more coming, which I'll tell you about, but we're gonna pick this winner between the four of you and see what we come up with. Um, pediatric X Stitcher. Yay. So, um, I will, I think, I, I think we follow each other on Instagram. So <clears throat> I'll message you there. And let you know um, if you don't message me first and um, I'll get that sent off to you I love um, I love that you live in, in a surfer community so it'll be definitely appropriate uh, ornament to end up on a tree out there and then sending you much love to California hope you were okay yesterday with that earthquake um, it's kind of a big one up near you all right so I guess I'm, I'm a little bleh. Maybe I should start over. I don't want to start over. Let's just, we're just going to go. So <clears throat> life, like I said, we've all been a little bit under the weather. Um, everyone's doing good now. It's only been two weeks since I've seen you last. We are chugging along. We had Thanksgiving with just my mom, um, came over. I pretty much did all of it except my mom made a pumpkin pie, a pumpkin chiffon pie. And then, um, she made her cranberry sauce, which is something that like we all really love at our house. Um, it's become a staple even for my husband, which is just like a happy thing that that's kind of coming to it. It's a really basic cranberry sauce. It's like cranberry. <laughs> she just cooks the cranberries down with half the sugar that the recipe calls for. So it's like nice and tart and really good. She doesn't really add anything extra to it. It's not a cranberry relish. It's not the canned stuff. It's just, it's perfect for us. Um, everyone has very strong opinions on cranberry. Um, but that is kind of where we're at. So, um, Thanksgiving, new starts, 
let's go. I started Turkey Bay from Plum Street Samplers. I was supposed to start this a long time ago with like I think Helen D and Kathy, they're done. I had never even started it. So I started it. I started it on um, Tombstone from Color and Cotton, which I think was um, a special fabric from a box. Um, I used half of it for, let's see, my Midnight Margaritas pattern. Um, and then the other half of it I used for this. So this is where I'm at. So I got all the water done and the beginning of two turkeys. And I'm pretty happy with how that's come out so far and how it looks on the fabric. I did start pulling flosses from my, um, I actually have pulled a variety of Color and Cotton, Gentle Arts, and Classic Color Works. So it has a lot of different, um, a lot of different thread company colors in it because I'm just pulling from stash and not going out and buying anything new for that. So that was one of my new starts and that was on a 24 new starts in 2024 list. So it was one that I like really wanted to knock off. Um, all of my new starts were from my 24 new starts in 2024 list because I <laughs> slacked and now I'm like oh my gosh I really slacked at starting new things and well I started some new things but not from the list and so I really wanted to get back to making sure that I got through that list of 24 new starts in 2024. So the next um the next one from that was from Night Spirit Studio and it is the self-isolating bat and I'm stitching it on a black linen. I think it's 28 count. <clears throat> and here's where I am so far. I've gotten quite a bit done. It looks really nice on camera, or at least in the little like picture that I'm looking at from you. Um, I, I really am I'm enjoying stitching on this, although I've been trying to stitch on it like while my I'm like having family time and, and I've had to pull a lot out and re re stitch because my counting has been subpar. So um, not any fault of the pattern, just the distractions that exist here and me trying like not to ignore my family. <laughs> don't want to do that. I like them. Okay, and then my other new start was the Black Cat from Bent Creek. So another one, um, 24 new starts in 2024, has just been sitting there, a teeny tiny little pattern. And... Here's what I have so far. So, not, nothing too crazy. Um, that's a lot of cat. It's like a, one, two, I mean, it's at least like a 600, 500, 600 stitch cat. So it's like a lot of black. And I'm using Black Crow. And this, um, this skein that I have is, that's what, it's what's called for. Um, mine is probably a little bit more blue than would normally be called for, but I don't know. I feel like, like shiny black cats sometimes look blue. And then I pulled this from Stash, um, a long, long time ago in California. I found a bunch of fancy flosses at the thrift store, and this is from that Stash. So the, it's a skein of Weeks Dye Works Sweet Potato, and the price tag on it is $2.10. It's really pretty. So that's my pumpkin color and like accent color down here. And then I don't know what green I'm gonna use yet. I'll just pull one when I get there and we'll see how it looks. So those were my new starts. Um, I am planning on um, I will have one more, one more regular floss tube video before the end of the year and before my whip parade on January 1st. And I 
would like to at least do three more new starts uh, from my list before we get there. And so hopefully in the next video, I will have three more new starts to show you. And hopefully I will have some finishes also. But I've been enjoying going into that bag that I created and getting some stuff started because I have had like that itchy starty bug. And I think sometimes when you have that itchy starty bug, then that like leads you to go buy things. Um, and granted, I still like want to buy things, especially there's like some whenever there's a new pattern that I really like, I'm not going to deny myself that. But sometimes it's just the want to start something and to have a bag of kitted up, ready to go projects. And they're not fully kitted, they're kitted with fabric. So kitted up projects, loose, loosely kitted. It just makes it easier to like get that, that start itch scratched versus like, going and spending $40 to like kit up another project that when I have something, you have stitching at home. <laughs> we don't need that. You have coffee at home. <laughs> we don't need that. We have cookies at home. <laughs> you don't need that. So I feel like, you know, we tell our kids that a lot and I feel like I need, I have to listen to that, that little voice too, is that I have, we have, I have stitching at home. I don't need that. Um, the self-isolating bat actually leads me to something else. So I have been stitching self-isolating bat in a thrift store score. So in this bag, which you will see a handy dandy $2 Goodwill um, price tag in. And then these hoops are, uh, well, one of them's Coates and Clark. I'm not quite sure. The other ones I don't see stamps on. Um, but thanks to Stephanie from Cross Stitch the Globe, um, I spotted an oval hoop in that bag with those. So it was well worth my $2. So I am now the owner of a duchess hoop. So I've been stitching self-isolating bat in that because it's the right shape. And this is in such good condition. I mean, there's like, I don't know if you can hear, let's see if this works. So there's like a couple little like blips in the felt here, um, but really like no issues. And the wood is smooth on all of them. So I was originally, I picked it up and I was like, oh, well, you know, Stephanie says these sell on eBay. <laughs> and like, we've been selling stuff on eBay from our house. So I was like, oh, I'll sell it on eBay. But then I was like, I want to try it because Stephanie stitches like all of her projects in um, vintage hoops. And so I was like, I will give it a shot. Um, I'm liking it. It's small for me, which I don't need anything big for stitching that self isolating bat. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I still don't know. I don't think I would be able to stitch like a bigger project on it. I would be happy stitching smalls in it. And maybe anything like that was like up to like 12 by 12 where I'd move this. I also haven't experienced yet what like happens when the stitches go in here and get like mooshed and like if it pulls on them at all. So I'm curious about that. I guess I could just send Stephanie a message and she would answer it. Stephanie, <laughs> what happens when you put stitches in there? Does it moosh them funny? Does it make them, like, does it pull on them more than any other kinds of hoops would? I don't know. I don't know why I feel like it would pull it more than other hoops would. I feel like, um, but yeah. So I'm enjoying that. So I guess keep your eye out at your local thrift stores for um, these magical hoops. So this is a Duchess. And Duchess Oval says it. Anyways, I definitely messaged Stephanie when I found it. And I was like, look at, look at what I got for $2. And not even $2, I mean, if you count that. <clears throat> I realized that I have picked up, like, people have always give me, like, they're like, oh, you cross stitch, here's some hoops. So I have, like, a pretty large collection of wooden cross stitch hoops or embroidery hoops. So I probably should try to finish something in a hoop at some point so I can use up some of these. But 
Anyways, still don't know if I'm keeping this or not, but I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely going to finish stitching self-isolating bat in it, and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, okay, whoops. Um, let's see. What was the first thing I picked up after I was done talking to you last time? I think the first thing I picked up after I was done talking to you last time, oh, because I wanted to make sure that I stitched um, a Mirabilia in Nora November, and I also knew that I hadn't touched this pattern at all this year, and so I wanted to get some stitches in. Um, I'm not going to show you before and after because we're getting to the time of year where now, like, we'll see the before and after in um, the whip parade. I will pull all of my screenshots from last year's whip parade so we can see where we are. But I put, um, probably over a thousand stitches into some bed sheets or mattresses, excuse me. I, I stayed away from the bed sheets. So I worked, um, over here. I don't know, I better over on this side. So I worked, I did like, I mean, a lot from here down. So I got a lot of stitching in. A lot of those little holes are for beads. And then there's a couple other colors that I need to fill in. Um, but I had another November stitch that I really wanted to work on in November. So I put this down. I always just really, I always just really love stitching on this. I, I think it's the fabric. Um, it is 32 count Lugana from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Steph in um, the colorway Moana. And I, I think this is my only like Lugana project other than like Hades where I'm stitching like one over one on 25 count. So the like 32 count, two strands, like the coverage is just like, absolutely perfect the needle feel is so good like, it is like just a it is a very pleasurable stitch as far as stitching goes and so um I don't know I just I like stitching on it it's not one that I like am dying to finish I was originally like oh I really want to finish it and have it done so the girls can have it in their room while they still like princesses I mean I think that ship has already sailed so this is just going to be for me. It's going to hang in my craft room and be a beautiful, beautiful mirror. Um, that it's going to be the beautiful mirror that it is. So I, like I said, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep going with it, and and I'll work on it a little bit every year, and we'll get there eventually. And then, I mean, pretty soon it's going to end up being my oldest whip, and then that's when I'll start like really pushing it. I think because um, plans wise, that's where other than my Hades, like that's where my focuses are really going to be throughout the year. I finished some older project last year, older projects last year, and it felt really good last year, this last year, and it felt really good. So I'm, I'm leaning towards, um, focusing like that again, but for right now, she got, she got some more of her mattresses done. Um, they do continue on the other side and I think the other side's actually more mattressy. Um, like I think, the halfway part is like right here in the pattern. So I think it's like less of the sheets and more of the mattresses, but uh, here. So, um, yeah, I'm working on this. I don't know what side I'm working on. Yeah, this side. It seems backwards, but it's not. I don't know. Anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, and then my other November pattern that I really wanted to work on because I haven't worked on it in years and I just keep showing it what parades it doesn't have any progress on it is Be Thankful. So I decided... And I think this part of this was this problem is that I didn't really like these swirly do's um, at the top and the bottom. And so I'm taking them off. And I don't even know that I'm going to do the lines with the leaves. 
on the top and the bottom like this line across I might just leave it as the pumpkins but I'm just gonna do the pumpkins and the little crows and the be thankful and that um, deciding that kind of gave me some more motivation um, what did hinder it is this fabric is rough to stitch on um, it is 40 count ale from picture this plus the holes are tiny the holes are tiny um, and I also don't know what brown and what green I originally grabbed and then put away after stitching but I did this whole pumpkin right here um, it is two colors there's like a tan and then the white from the other pumpkin which I think I actually managed to pick up the same white um, whether or not I did it's close enough and it's like I think the other pumpkin, yeah, the other pumpkin right next to the white pumpkin is also a tall two-tone pumpkin. So even if I grabbed the wrong white with that two-tone, I think it will blend and then moving on out the solid white pumpkins, it will be far enough away from the middle pumpkin that it won't matter. <clears throat> but this requires a lot of light. And I was stitching it in hand. I think I might put it on a hoop next time. Maybe I'll put it on that duchess and try to get a little bit more tension and that might help with the hole seeing situation. Um, but yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> and then I worked on 324 again. So I, like I said, this I keep in our bedroom and I just pull like six flosses at a time and throw them in the bag and then, um, when we're watching sports or movies I've seen before, um, I just will take out a color that I know is like in the vicinity that I have stuff done and I'll work on it. So I added six uh, motifs, uh, three and three of the um, like actual motifs and then the 25 like stitch squares uh, all right here. So like, um, I added this one and this one and this one and then the three I think these three blues but holy cow like it I mean these are these two were very stitch heavy and then this one was like a nice little break but this one was like the only one I did on the night that I did that one because I was like slogging through it but so this is where 324 is And I am still absolutely adoring this project. I actually might be a little bit sad when I finish it, um, but I've got a while to go still, so that should, shouldn't be <laughs> a problem. <laughs> okay, so that is like the cross stitch stuff. Oh no, one more cross stitch thing. Um, I have a lot, I have a bunch of other crafty stuff to show you though. Okay, so, in a future video, we're going to talk about this floss, but I want to show you what I did this week. And then because later in the week, I'm going to take you through my process, but I also want to show you that I'm going to like change some of it. So I wanted a gradient of seven flosses um, in aqua. And so I um, did, a t I'm doing a tutorial on how to do this said thing but so like I'm happy with these and then like the third and I'm happy with this but these three are even though I did different amounts of dye and water um, I, I'm, I'm gonna try today to kind of make um, everything a little bit more contrasty because I do if you really look they are okay as far as like different but yeah these three these three right here just need a little bit more oomph and then I was thinking maybe if I start darker it will give me some more wiggle room in the middle so I might just give everything an additional dip um, leading up to those middle ones and then work from there. Um, 
or I may start and do it all over again. But so that's coming this week um, as part of my Flossmas. Um, I don't do like a everyday open the box Flossmas. Obviously you haven't seen a Flossmas video for me yet this year. I just like to do little extra specials during this month. I know there's tons of content to watch um, right now and there are so many videos up. So again, thank you for spending some time with me. But um, so I have this uh, tutorial on how on how I did this and I will add in whatever I do um, this evening as far as adjusting these colors and or let you know that I just had to start all over again because everything just came out the same color. So we shall see. Um, so that's my gradient. Um, in order to get that gradient though I like dyed a bunch of different formulas so we'll talk about that too. But so I have like a bunch of different aqua type color flosses right now. So I'm gonna get these all carded up. They just um, dried fresh, so I wanted to show you today, but, like my fun that I did. But, so tutorial to come on that. And then, I have my finished quilt top. And then I'll show you my other finished item that I have. So, oh, I forgot to bring my the cover of this. Um, I'll insert a picture of what this quilt top book like looks like. Um, <clears throat> you can make a much bigger quilt, you can make a baby size quilt. Usually for the baby size quilts, um, so the full size quilt is multiple multiple colorways, so the rainbow essentially. Um, and then when she breaks it down for the directions for a baby size quilt top, she limits the colorways. So she says like pick two families, I think, or three families. Um, and my niece was having a baby and she decided to not find out the sex of the baby before the baby was born, which I absolutely love. We did that too with our first and it was the best surprise of my life. Um, but so I wanted, I didn't want to choose a colorway and like have it be more traditionally like leaning in one direction or the other. Not that it like truly matters, but you know, um, my, my first who I obviously didn't know the sex of, she is a girl. Um, her quill is like very like it's lime and aqua and it could have easily gone either way um it's not super like girly in the sense of like what usually gets gifted at baby showers but um and then my second hers <laughs> is like very feminine and like rosy and um like I don't know, birds and flowers and um <laughs> it's just their quilts are on their beds and it just always makes me giggle because like they don't suit their personalities at all. So whatever you, whatever quilt you make for them, it's just like, it, it's not going to matter in the end. Um, but, but so this is the quilt that I made for my nephew or my, my niece's son. So my like grand nephew, I don't know what he's called, but here it is. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show the whole thing. So here's the top row. So I did like a rainbow gradient. So like red, orange, yellow, green. And then I did like more of an aqua. And then the next row, I did it backwards, red, orange. And I tried to mix the orange and the yellow into that bird so that they wouldn't like, because if I did red, orange, yellow, then the yellow bird on the top would be on top of a yellow toucan. And so I just kind of mixed the yellow in with the orange on this row. And then the toucan, green, aqua, and blue for the cockatiel. But so I'm so jazzed about this. It is done. Um, let's see. So there's like a bunch of really special fabrics in here. Um, this fabric is from a quilt that I made for one of our other cousin's babies in the same family. 
This is from my youngest's quilt. Um, let's see. What else do I have? That's special. The backing is going to be a fabric that I picked up um, when I was in Hawaii for this niece's high school graduation. Um, oh, the red on this bird. Um, the tummy of this bird is from um, another cousin's baby quilt. So yeah, there's just, and then, oh, and then yeah, this green again is from my daughter's quilt. These stars are from the same quilt as the green dots from another cousin. And the orange dots as well are from that. So yeah, just um, really, really fun. So that's on my to-do list for this week is that I need to um, baste, quilt, and bind this. I actually haven't decided on what color I'm going to bind it with. I'll probably um, go with a blue or a green um, just because the backing is like yellow and brown. The blue or the green probably sounds better. Maybe yellow, actually. I don't know. I'll have to look and see what it looks what it looks like with it. All right. And then the other thing that I wanted to share. So, um, a long time ago, like not a long time ago, but maybe like three years, four years. I've had this box sitting in my house for four years. <clears throat> not this, but this, and it was filled with wooden bobbins of all different kinds of thread. These are like some big ones that are left over. This is like a pearl cotton. Um, and then there's like teeny tiny bobbin. Um, a lot of darning silk. Oh, we can I'll focus on that. So I love like darning silk, wood, wooden bobbins. Um, what's this one? Darning cotton. And then um, I also, it also came with, oh, this one's cool. This one is silk also. Um, it's like a, it, it's like almost bobbin size. Oh, it's just so, and it's really pretty. It's like a aqua. I don't know. I couldn't use this one. Obviously it's in here. Um, and then also it has all these really cool, <clears throat> um, needles. So these are just so neat. They're sharps. So they open up. I'll just show you. And it has, they're like the needle packs, the really like vintagey needle packs. I actually don't know <clears throat> when these are from. And it doesn't say, but like <clears throat> all different kinds. Like here's boy, like they still make needles. Uh, like this one is a big one, Piccadilly. Large eyes. I just, the artwork on these is so cool. I gotta figure out what to do with these still. But I'm going to show you what I did with all my bobbins, or a chunk of them, but I'm going to show you these still. I think I showed them in a, the video a long time ago, but, um, but these packets are just, oh, oh, they're so cute. Like a time long forgotten. Sorry. Nostalgic, I guess. Yeah, they're just, I don't know, they're so cool. Okay, so I saw this on a someone's Instagram. They did something similar, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a genius. And then I found a bag of these wooden beads at um, Goodwill for $2. And I was like, that's it. It's happening. Um, you can buy these at Michael's. But I made a garland from my... Um, wooden spools and I'm gonna stand up so a lot of them um, what happens with these old wooden spools is the little 
like slit that you would normally um, stick the floss in or the thread in to like hold it is broken. So since they're wood, a lot of them would break off. This one actually is still exists. Let's see. Can you see it? No. But a lot of them were broken. So what I started doing, I've been trying two different things and I might just um, end up doing the whole thing. I did put nail polish on them to try to keep the floss on or the thread on. So we'll see. And then I also like I tied knots after, I was gonna just like layer them, um, but I tied knots after each, like they're really close to the balls, um, because I wanted to be able to still see like all the interesting, it's like really doesn't wanna, it's like no, lady, you're too close. I really just wanted to be able to still see the like really interesting ends of the spools. I mean, there's a lot of like quotes and quotes and Clark, um, and they are obviously like stickers, but a lot of them are like printed on the spools themselves. And I just wanted to make sure that I still was able to see those. Um, so like some of the stickers are like falling off, but now they'll hopefully just kind of stay on because they have a better, um, So anyways, this is going to hang on my, um, probably on my quilt ladder, but it's long. Um, I had a lot. I didn't really realize how much I had. Oh, this one's cool too. And this one, I, um, it has like sparkles in it. Like there's, this is like a, this is an old one. And it has like metal because like this one's printed on the spool. Um, the older ones are so because I just saw and then I just saw at my Goodwill they had like bags of wooden wooden spools and I was like I just can't buy them like I don't didn't know well I didn't know if I would ever actually do this because you know sometimes you just have these projects that you like plan for that just are sitting around your house that you like know you want to do and you have the stuff for but you just don't get around to it anyways so I like see there's there's haze um so I need to figure out how to really like get the hangies out of the way but if you see a box of old one spools at your thrift store and you're like oh I don't know what I would do with that but I really like them um this is what you can do with it I used um what is this? This is like macrame um, rope that I like already had in my house. Um, I put like a piece of tape on the top part to make it pointy. Um, some of the spools I had to like stick my scissors, like embroidery scissors in and kind of like clean out the hole to make sure that, that it would go all the way through. But now I have some sewing decoration. Um, this, like I said, it'll go up there for now. And then probably once I get my little tomato pincushion collection like going, this will go with that also. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah. All right. So moving forward, um, either this weekend or early next week, you should see a video from me, um, either a tutorial or a wrap up. So my extras this month are going to be a 24 and 24, 24 new starts in 2024 wrap up video. Um, you'll get a tutorial on the gradient floss dyeing, and then um, you'll get January 1st whip parade, um, another floss tube video from me coming in two weeks. And then what else? I think I had, oh, and a big plans video. Um, I have not fully set those yet, but I definitely um, walked myself right into hosting a sal uh, the other day on a stitchy chat. <laughs> so um, I got a Barbara Anna coming up for sure. Um, but but yeah, we will see. Um, I am super excited for December. Have fun if you're going to the Jingle Ball. Um, I won't be there this year. Um, it's, I 
I just never know when I'm going to have actual time to do things during this time of year, so I can't sign up for extra stuff like that. But have a blast if you get to go. Um, I'm a little bit on the jealous side. Um, and then um, thank you for everybody else who's producing all the videos right now because there's just always something to watch and it's just been really lovely. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and commenting. Um, I appreciate you. <laughs> all I want for Christmas is to get to 1,500 subscribers and I'm really close. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you later. Enjoy the season.